Thank you so much, Pastor. Um, Pastor Janine is uh, going to be a ministry support. <laughs> We've learned during the conference. But uh, we bring greetings from New Life Tacloban, and uh, we praise God for this awesome opportunity today. Want to say something? Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting us here. Can, can I ask everybody if you can please stand up for a moment? Why don't we just raise our hands all over this place and let's just, let's just welcome the presence of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We honor your sweet presence in this place, Lord. We look to the cross, the empty grave, and we recognize, God, our hearts are full, all because of you. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here today to reveal Jesus to each one of us. Thank you, God, for encouragement. Thank you for joy. Thank you for freedom. Thank you, God, that you're still in the business of healing people. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here this morning to encourage somebody who came in with a heavy heart. Thank you, God, that you're going to stretch some of us, Lord God, in a good way, because it's your heart's desire to make us fruitful and make us more productive in the kingdom. Lord, we rely upon you today, Holy Spirit. I can do nothing apart from you. And we recognize you today because you have put a word in my heart that you want me to deliver to your people because you want to bless somebody. We honor the pastors, Lord God, in this place. We thank you, God, for, what they, for the sowing that they have been doing, God, all throughout this nation and even in the nations outside of the Philippines. So we cheer them on today. We encourage them today, God. I thank you that you would encourage your pastors, Lord, with your word today, God, reminding them that they're doing well, they're doing good, oh God, and do, doing better than they realize. Holy Spirit, enlarge their hearts today. Enlarge our hearts today. Bless every person in this room, Lord Jesus. We know that we came in one way, but we prophesy and we declare we're coming out different. We're coming out encouraged. We're coming out blessed. We're coming out stronger, built, touched, equipped in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, Lord God, for the house of God. We thank you for your church. Healthy and strong. Come on, somebody. Healthy and strong. Oh, we love the house of God. Come on, if you love the house of God, just give Jesus praise for a moment. Come on, you can do better than that. Go ahead. All over this place. If you have been blessed because you're in a church that is healthy and strong, come on, somebody. If you are here today and you have a testimony, testimony that your marriage has been restored, your family had been blessed, your business had been revived. If Come on, if you are here today and you've got a testimony, you have been saved, hallelujah. You used to be someone, but now you've got a testimony of the goodness of God, of the faithfulness of God, of the graciousness of Jesus. Come on, everyone in this place got a testimony. We've got something to be thankful for today. Come on, just lift your voice up. Let, lift your hands up. Let's just give Jesus all the glory and all the praise. Come on, church. I don't know about you, but I love the house of God. I, I, I don't know how to live my life as a Christian if there's no church. And so I want to remind you today of that, and I want to encourage you. Never treat the church as just another organization. I'm telling you right now, there is an organization that will last more than your organizations. Now, no offense meant to anybody. I know you're proud of what, what you, uh, you know, the organization that you're a part of. Let me just say something today, that there is a church of Jesus in this world, in this planet, that's making a difference. Come on, that's doing so well, making a difference, touching people's lives in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, can you just help me with my wife, behalf of my wife and the entire New Life Tacloban family, can we just honor Pastors Paul and Shadi for their lives? Oh, church, come on, you can do better than that for their lives, for their giving. Come on, come on, come on, don't stop now. For their obedience, for their generosity. Pastor Paul, I, I wanna say this with all my heart on behalf of my wife. I glorify Jesus for your lives, you and Pastor Shadi. 
I, I know where I am. I know where I came from. And I want to give glory to the Lord for your life because I would not be where we are right now as, a pa as pastors, even as a Christian, if it wasn't also for your obedience. Thank you so much, Pastor Paul, Pastor Shadi. We honor you. We love you. We love you. Thank you so much. Amen. You know, my, my, my middle child loves basketball. And she, he loves Steph Curry. And I, I thought about that. I said, if, if Steph Curry will be the coach of my son, I can already tell the future. You will know what God is up to when it comes to your destiny by looking at how, who God sends into your world. To impart to you, come on somebody, to past, pastor you, to love on you, to equip you. So can we give it up for all the pastors here in the house, in-house pastors. Come on, give it up, in-house pastors and all our network pastors in this room today. Oh, come on, if you are close to the pastors that are here today from Luzon, Visayas, and Mineral, can you just give them a high five? Can you just encourage them? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to honor Pastors Giselle and Mylene. Oh, come on, guys. You are blessed. You are blessed. Oh, come on, you are spoiled. Not only that you're given good-looking pastors, but we, lo we love these, these, these guys. Pastors Giselle and Pastor Amalin, you know that we love you. Thank you for your lives. We are blessed with your friendship. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And of course, my wife, ladies and gentlemen, can we give it out to Pastor Janine? I know, I, I know, I know, I'm taking time. I know, and it, 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 it's, it pays to honor people. Amen. The, the last time I was here, I had an opportunity to, to preach here in New Life. My wife was not here. She was supposed to fly back to Tacloban yesterday, but she decided to stay. So, can we honor her? Come on. To be my ministry support. So, please remain standing for reading of, of God's Word. We're just going to read a few verses. If you can just, uh, can we just honor Jesus? We want to make sure that you understand this is not my opinion. I'm not just trying to encourage you out from, uh, from somebody's message. This is the Word of God. Amen. I want you to turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. It's a beautiful story that the Lord has placed in my heart to impart to all of us today. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 4, starting from verse 8, this beautiful story. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It says, Now it happened one day when Elisha went over to Shonim, where there was a prominent, somebody say prominent, an influential woman, somebody say influential, and she persuaded him to eat a meal. Afterward, wherever he passed by, he stopped there for a meal. She said to her husband, Behold, I sense... Some translation says, I perceive that this is a holy man of God who frequently passes our way. Please let us make a small, fully walled upper room on the housetop and put a bed. Somebody say a bed. There for him with a table. Somebody say a table. And a chair. And a lampstand. Then whenever he comes to visit us, he can turn in there. Let's give a club offering for God's Word. It's powerful. It is life-changing. And it's going to bless every single one of us today. Before you sit down, let me give you the title of the message today. A home and a room. A home and a room. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we continue to acknowledge you today. Thank you so much for this beautiful Word. Encourage our hearts with this, Lord. I thank you for giving us fresh perspective fresh revelation, reminding us of our strategic role as a church. We give you praise for this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, before you sit down, can you turn to someone and say, can you turn to someone and say, I don't know what you've been eating lately, but you look better than the last time I saw you. Come on, look to, look to somebody else and say, I don't know what you have been up to lately, but you look good today.
beautiful, beautiful story about this Shunammite woman. And beginning this month, beginning uh, uh, the start of this month, we, we did a series, and we still are in that series, entitled, I Love the House of God. And we're happy when we came to the conference, the message, the theme is about the church for this hour. How many of you know God is speaking? God is speaking. And the Lord opened my eyes to this story. I have preached from this story a few times. But then in my prayer, the Lord revealed to me, opened my eyes to this story, to another layer to this story that blessed my life. And I want to encourage you with it today. I'd like to submit to you this morning, brothers and sisters, that there are two layers to this story. One side of the story is about man making room for God. There is this Shunammite woman who was known for being influential, being prominent, well-to-do. What One of the descriptions is she was a well-to-do woman. She's capable. She's able. She's a great woman. And, and she was known for being hospitable. She probably was a Filipino or something. <laughs> Amen. She was hospitable and generous. She was the one that uh, invited the man of God, Elisha, into her home, into her house eventually. And uh, so one side of the story is man making room for God. And what will happen if you and I will make room for God? And we know the story that, that the Bible says that this woman perceived that this is a holy man of God. And what she did was she invited the man to eat for a meal. It started with a meal. One day led to frequently, often. And then eventually she decided, she talked to her husband and she said, Honey, I feel like this man is a, is a, a holy man of God. Let, let's build him a room. She wasn't satisfied with visitation. She wanted to go for habitation. Because she felt like if this is God, and I feel like this is God, and this is a God moment, this is a God opportunity, I, I, I will not miss this. And I don't just want this one, once in a lifetime. You know, some, some of us, sometimes we look for the opportunity of a lifetime. To, but I, I want to say this to you today, that the opportunity of a lifetime is in the lifetime of opportunity. It could be a daily thing. It could be the thing that, that God wants you to do, on, uh, wants to do for you on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, every single day of our lives. So... And, and we, we know from the story that this woman did not have a child. And eventually she got blessed with a child. And can, can, can I say this, brothers and sisters, that maybe we're just seeing from, from the surface that this woman is just, you know, she was just hospitable. She was just doing the thing. You know, and she was, she was probably a believer. Obviously, she was a believer of God. And that she wanted to make room for God. But then could it be that this woman also was a desperate woman and she was on the lookout for God opportunity? And she saw that this is a man of God. This is, this is God knocking on my door. And I, I, I will not miss this opportunity. And she said that, you know, she said to her husband, we're going to make room for him. We're going we're gonna to have this move of God, if you will, in our family. And eventually she got blessed with a child. And we know the rest of the story. That's, that's one side of the story. But another layer to the story that the Lord opened my eyes to is this. God making room for us. We always talk about we make room for God and what can happen when we make room for God. But I want to say to you today, brothers and sisters, in this story also, Elisha represents a God opportunity for somebody, for a family, for, for a person who is lost, that is passing by, I mean, passing by every, every single day or, or often. You know, and, 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 and I believe that another layer to this story is the church, a God making room for people through the church. When we have that sensitivity, because this woman was known for being sensitive. And, and it's one of the things that you need to understand, brothers and sisters, that got me so excited is, I found out that Shonim, the, the meaning of Shonim means resting places. That, that to me sounds like the church. Come on, somebody. That sounds like a church when people find rest in the presence of the Lord. Another thing that got me interested is I found out that Shonim is a border city of Issachar. And we know that this tribe is known for being a people who knows times and seasons. And so I did not wonder why she had that discern, you know, she was discerning, she was perceptive. 
She was sensitive to the things of God. Why? Because she lived in that environment. So can I encourage church people today, don't you ever be over familiar with the fact that you are in a church this healthy, this strong, because you could be in, this, in the presence of the Lord, you know, all the time. And sometimes you, you, you and I would lose sight of the blessing of being in this environment. It's helping us make right decisions. It's helping, it's helping us walk in divine wisdom. Can I have an amen in the, the house of God today? Wow, what a blessing. And, and I, was, I, was, I was surprised and I was blessed to know that Issachar, I mean, uh, uh, um, Shonem is a border city of Issachar. And then I, I look up, the name Elisha means God of my salvation, or my God saves. And so another layer that God has showed me in this story is this, God making room for people through the church. Interestingly, and how many of us know that the Holy Spirit, which is the ulti, who is the ultimate, ultimate author of the Bible, did not just add these informations in the Bible like a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp just to thicken up the Bible. How many of you know that God is an intentional God? If He put it there, that means there's something about that that God wants us all to see. I'm fascinated with the idea that God, that the, the, Sh the Shunammite woman which speaks of the church, is spiritual because she was discerning, and strategic because she had a plan. I want to bring this understanding to all of us today, brothers and sisters. I encourage you to look at the church the way Jesus would look at the church. It's not just a place you go to. It's a place you belong to. It's a place where we grow in our knowledge of who He is and we discover the purpose of God for our lives. And, and, and the Lord reminded us I was praying a couple of years ago about, Lord, give me a simplified version. I know our purpose statement is new life. We know our, our, our vision is building strong local churches, and I love that we embrace that. But who are we? God has given me a very simple definition of what new life is about in the light of, of new life, Tacloban. New life is a life-giving church, leading people in a life-changing journey with Jesus. That's simple. We are a life-giving church, leading people in a life-changing journey with Jesus. And all of, us, we, all of us, we have a story of how we started here in church. You, you, probably, you, you have your own story of how you began here in new life. You got invited by someone. So you started like, you know, part of the crowd. You don't have friends. You don't know much about the Bible, but you just came in. The Lord led you here. And so now you have a community. You have friends and uh, you have brothers and sisters. Some of you probably did, uh, found your, your partner here or your, your spouse here. Can I have an amen? Because uh, most of the people that are married, they found their partner or spouse in the church, which is a good thing. Amen. The Lord reminded me of this beautiful thing. He said, Ram, the church has a responsibility to help people turn the house of God into a home. Because we've, we've all been to different houses, but we, we don't call them home. Come on, you could be in a church, but don't feel like you're home. You could be here visiting week in and week out, but you're not part of anything. This is a house for you. And it's wonderful. You're a recipient of the ministry of the vision of this house, and you're encouraged, and you're built up here, but you're not part of anything. You don't have a sense of ownership as to what new life is all about. Can, can you feel me today, church? But I want to encourage you to take a, another step. A, 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 take that next level, if you will, that, that God wants you to experience as far as your journey with the Lord is concerned. So the Lord has reminded me this, Ram, the church has a responsibility to help people turn a home, this home, in, a house into a home. And for that to happen, the Lord showed me this, we must provide a home, yes, for people, just like the woman provided a home for Elijah, for Elijah. but he went further. He built a room for him. I'd like to say this today, but for everyone in this room 
in this, in this service right now to call New Life your home. You've got, you've got to discover that room that God has specifically provided for you. And we're going to journey in the next few minutes today. Because for me, you know what? I've been invited to different houses, but I did not go to the rooms. Because I wasn't part of the family. Here's how you know you're part of the family. You've got a specific room. And the room is not an empty room. The room is furnished. So let's just journey together so that we'll finish right away and so that you will have your lunch blessed and smiling. Amen. I'd like to submit to you today that this specific furniture that was provided, the house was, the room was furnished with, got a purpose and God wants us to, to see some things today. A bed. Let's start with a bed. Can I have, can I have uh, Fendi, you're here? Fendi? Fendi, you're here. So you're, you're Elisha. Elisha speaks of a God move, but Elisha also speaks of the God of salvation giving spiritual endorsement. I want this person to get saved. I endorse new life to be the house that will become the future home. So Elisha also speaks of a person who does not know Jesus yet. But I was fascinated when the Lord opened my eyes to this. The first introduction to the house of God is a bed. Ladies and gentlemen, because a bed speaks of a place of, to experience rest and restoration. It's a place when you are tired, traveling, you know, you could be in different hotels, or you could be traveling in and out of the country, but there's no place like your home, and there's no place like your bed. Like you go there and you know, oh, go ahead, you can, you can sleep. I, I give him the permission to sleep. I told him you can sleep, because the rest of our guys in New Light Club, and they really did sleep, and somebody had to wake them up after the service. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the responsibility of the church. God making room for people through the church. And God is saying, be on a lookout for a God opportunity. There are people in your offices. There are people in your workplace. There are people in your business. There are people in your village. There are people that, that you will come in contact with that needs to be restored, that needs to be healed. A bed is a place for healing. A bed is a place of comfort. A bed is a place of restoration. If you go to the hospital, they will not let you stand. They will let you lie down in the bed. Why? Because the bed is a place of restoration. I feel like the church is rising up in the name of Jesus with sensitivity and be, uh, with strategy to open room, to, to open doors for people, to bring them into this house that they will discover as their home and they find their own room in this place and they will have the sense of ownership. I, I feel like I belong here. I feel like I'm not judged here. I feel like I'm going to grow here. I feel like I'm going to be str a strong in this place. A place of rest, restoration. Amen. Are you with me today? I'd like to submit to you today that a bed speaks of a place to find comfort. I don't know how smelly your bed is. No offense meant. But it's not nothing, you know, I mean, no hotels could be compared to that because there's nothing like your own home, your own room, and your own bed. Yep, yeah. You would miss it, Pastor Edwin, when you know, would travel and then you, you're back. The church is a place where people get restored. Somebody say amen. amen. Healed. And I just, I just want to pause because the Holy Spirit reminded me before I came in, the Lord put in my heart and He kept on reminding me of this throughout the conference until this morning. That there is someone, a, a man, maybe a, a, a woman, a few of you here, you came in with a heavy heart. And you feel, you feel like you're in a dead, you are on a dead end or in a dead end of your situation. It, it's bad, it's, it's crazy, and you feel hopeless. And you have had thoughts of suicide. And if you're here today, the Lord wants you to know He brought you to the right place. He brought you here not to be judged. He brought you here to heal up. He brought you here so that you will find comfort in the house of God. In the house of God, we provide a bed for people. Not like, not literally, okay? But for people to understand that the house of the Lord, the house called New Life, the club, and exists to provide a place for people to get restored, to heal up, to find comfort, to be strengthened again. If you are that person today, we... I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will set you free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
a bed. A bed is a place to dream. A church is a place to dream. You probably experienced, I don't know how bad your experience was in the world, but you came to church and all of a sudden your dream came alive again. All of a sudden you said, I'm going to believe God again. I'm going to believe God again. I, I felt hopeless when I came to New Life, but now I have these dreams in my heart. I have these dreams for my marriage. I have these dreams for my family. I have these dreams for my business. I have these dreams for my career. And I'm, I'm, I am not hopeless. I have hope in Christ Jesus. The church provides that for people. It is God making a room for people through the church to experience what it means to dream again for the glory of God. Give God somebody just give Jesus praise. A place where aspirations and expectations come alive again. Somebody say amen. It's a place to embrace a vision. How many of you, when you are lying in, the, in your bed, you have all this, you have all kinds of thoughts when it comes to your future and, and, and you smile. The church is a place where you could be sitting on a Sunday, coming in hopeless and it's all, it's been crazy. But you sit down and you listen to the gospel. You listen to the word of God. You listen to the people of God come and preach and declare God's will and purposes for our lives. And all of a sudden, faith comes alive in your heart. All of a sudden, as you said, God, I'm going to expect again. I was disappointed, but I'm going to expect again. I'm going to look to Jesus. I'm going to look to the cross. I know that you will not disappoint me. You're the God who is good. You're a God who is intentional. Somebody say amen. A church provides a home and provides a room. And this room is furnished with a bed. And how, how many of you know that the bed is also a place of intimacy? Don't make me explain, ladies and gentlemen. If you're married, you know that the bed, especially your own bed, so don't, don't be in somebody else's bed. It's a place of intimacy. And if you have, if you get intimate with, with your spouse, you know that you're going to produce babies. How many of you know if you are going to get intimate with God in the life of the church, that all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, you, you see yourself being more productive, being more fruitful. And all of a sudden, come on. You, all of you are seeing all these fruits come out of your life effortlessly. Because I haven't seen a tree that tries to produce fruit. You just have to be planted in the house of God. Amen. And get intimate with Jesus. Intimate with His Word. Intimate with the Holy Spirit. You, you, you're not satisfied with casual. You're not satisfied with surface level Christianity and you said God I'm gonna go deeper with you I'm gonna, I'm gonna go honest with you God and, and, and when that happens ladies and gentlemen all, all of a sudden fruits come out of your life in Jesus name it's a place to develop intimacy with God and eventually you conceive and birth something in the spirit and we see them come to reality in Jesus name and everybody said amen and Fendi, Fendi it's time to wake up can you stand up because in the church you cannot just be laying down and feel comfortable for 20 years. <laughs> There's a time of growing up and you're introduced to a community. There's a table. Come on, come here, brother. There's a table provided for you in the house of God. It amazes me that in a family you have a table and in that table you always have your own place. That's my chair. That's my plate. That's mine. Get out of there. You have that ownership. You know that you belong, that you have a family in the house of God, that you have a community in the house of God, that you are not alone. You're never meant to do life alone. You know, it amazes me in Genesis chapter 2, in, in a perfect environment, because the fall of man is in chapter 3, right? So in a perfect environment, God saw something that wasn't good. And you know what it was? It wasn't good for a man to be alone. And it wasn't just in the context of marriage, but I believe it was in the context of community. God never meant for any of us to do life alone. Some, some of us sometimes we go to church, we sneak in and sneak out. As if we have this appointment always with the president every after the service. We don't take time. I mean, the love is provided for you to connect with people. You gotta know some friends. You gotta have some friends. You cannot do it alone. You gotta have people in your world. You gotta, you know, you have to have some people that will pray for you, believe with you. You pray for them, you believe with them. Come on, can I have an amen in the house of God? That's why it's bigger now. And the dreams of our pa your pastors, ladies and gentlemen, is to make it more, even bigger. Why? Because we want to make room for people. 
We want to make room for people to connect. You see, you have to have a conversation. You need fellowship. But Pastor Ram, I'm the church and I don't, I don't go to church. But the church needs to leave the building and find some friends to connect relationships. I believe that the table speaks of what? Communion, communication, good and healthy conversation, community, friendship, strategic partnership, divine covenant relationships. In the house of God, we provide this. You're not just here to feel comfortable, but you're here to grow in community. You're, you're gonna grow. Listen, it's in the church that you learn how to forgive. Don't wonder why ah, I was disappointed. They're supposed to behave like Christians. Duh. You're not in heaven yet. One of the reasons why God would surround you with imperfect people, because you're one of them. Thank you, Jesus. Only Pastor Paul clap. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. A table speaks of a place where we commune, we communicate, we find a community. We have friends. How many of us have been blessed with great friends in the church? Come on, anybody thankful that you found a friend in the church? You irritate yourself every once, yourself every once in a while, but it's okay. Because they, irri they irritate you forward. Somebody say amen. A place for participation. A church is a place for a participation. You participate, right? You wash the dishes after. Like you, you pair the table, amen? You've got a part. It speaks of, that's why I, I was, some of the guys are pre they're preparing for this. And I said, Pastor, is it okay if it's just, you know, it, it's, the, the, it's like an office table? No, I, and it, it needs to be around because I want to communicate. And God wants to communicate that it's, we are not emphasizing here ranks and, you know, and super, super duper spiritual. This is the house of God. Everybody finds a place, hallelujah. Everybody's encouraged. Uh, don't misunderstand me. There's, there are leaders, you know, that God has called in the house of God and this is not you know democracy this is God leading everybody into this family where they experience friendship relationship strategic partnership in the house of God somebody give Jesus praise for that hallelujah but maybe some of you was a little bit were a little bit disappointed because you did not expect that in a table every once in a while you get corrected Remember those moments you, are, you feel uncomfortable because you know you made some mistakes and your dad came and said, I've heard about what happened with your brother. And it happened at the table. Can I say this, brothers and don't be surprised if you get corrected in the house of God. Come on, somebody. Because it's a family. Have you ever been corrected in your own family, in your own home? With your own parents, with your own... Amen. A place for community, communion, friendship, strategic partnership. But this is also a place of correction. And correction is good. It pushes us forward. Amen? And here's the barometer when it comes to sonship or daughtership in the house of God. The Lord gave this, you know, imparted this to us a few years ago. He said, the measure is not just conception. Because you can get saved in new life. I got born again in new life. The measurement is not just conception but correction. How you'll respond after you get corrected. Because sons don't suddenly say, you're not my father anymore, I'm coming out of this. You get corrected, but you stay. Because right, you understand this is family. There are spiritual authorities that got us a, a place above you. And you need it. I need it. I'm th I, thank, I thank God. I, I remember some, some of the trainings I had. In fact, my first concept of leadership, my understanding of leadership, at least a little bit, of what leadership was all about. It was looking at my, my, my father, who, who was a, a village chief. Not in a tribe. He was a barangay captain, you know. You know, that was the... You understand, brothers and sisters, that, that God places people over our lives to protect, preserve, to make sure that we will become all that we are going to be as far as God's destiny is concerned for our lives. If you are thankful for your leaders, if you're thankful for your pastors, even if you get corrected, come on, just love on them for a moment. Come on, give them a hand. Correction is healthy. I'd like to submit to you today, we're all down with two more, a chair. I submit to you this morning that a chair speaks of our positioning in Christ. 
It speaks of God's position in our lives. Speaking of lordship, Pastor Edwin, which you reminded me about my preaching today. A chair speaks of God's position in your life. Not just posi God's, your position in God, but God's position in your life. That He is your Lord. You know, when I got saved, all I did was, I did not have myself crucified. I just, have received, I just received it by faith. How did I do it? Through faith confession. Confession of faith. With simple confession of faith, I received my salvation. Because Jesus did the hard work. Right? I did not add to it. Salvation, you know, you cannot add to it. Jesus finished the work. When we say finished work, what did He finish? The work of salvation. He finished it. But when it comes to sanctification, there's submission that needs to happen. Salvation, it takes confession. But when it comes to sanctification, you've got to walk with Jesus and acknowledge His Lordship, His leadership, His authority over your life. So I believe that a chair speaks of Jesus' position in our lives. I believe it speaks of Jesus' Lordship. Come on, somebody say amen. It speaks, brothers and sisters, of His authority over our lives. His leadership over our lives. Amen. I, I, I'm fascinated with Psalm 23. I was listening to Pastor Giselle's preaching on, on the Lord is my shepherd. And it amazes me. He talks about the Lord, be, the Lord, the shepherd of our lives is the Lord. And then the translation on a daily basis is He leads me. He leads me. He leads me. He leads me. If you, cannot under, if you don't understand lordship, then understand leadership. Would you allow the Lord to lead you? Throughout the different seasons of our lives. Because sometimes, oh, I don't know, this is my Lord. But sometimes we don't understand what it means for Jesus to be our Lord. But can you handle leadership? Jesus is not a dictator. Jesus is not a tyrant. He's trying to lead you forward throughout the different seasons of your life. If you're thankful for that, give Him praise. Somebody in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I believe that a chair also speaks of a place that we grow in our knowledge of the finished work of Jesus. That's why when he said it is finished, he sat down at the right hand of God. In other words, please stop trying to pay for it. Please stop trying to add to it. Just enjoy what Jesus has already finished. Somebody say, Amen. It speaks of a life of restful increase. That there's two ways to do it. Stressful or restful. We don't rest. We know stressful. We know how to do it the hard way. We strive, you know, we struggle. But God is trying to teach us this abundant life. It's not something that we produce. This is something that God is, Jesus said, I came to give you life. Wait, Jesus, you, I already have life. Jesus said, I got some, something way better than what you have right now. It's an abundant life. It's something that you can enjoy. A life that you can enjoy. It's a place where we grow in our understanding of our authority also as a believer. Lately, I've been talking to the church, to our team about our authority as a believer. God has been reminding us. You know, when Jesus said, you know, all authority has been given to me, therefore go. He deputized the church. You know that you'll find that Jesus did awesome miracles when he was on earth. But after he deputized the church, you could only see a few little miracles and then he ascended back to heaven. You know why? Because now he has his body on the earth. And he said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be working one of, working with you. One of the things that fascinated me about the Shunammite woman was this. He did not just do the thing. If the woman speaks of the church, the church don't, don't just do its thing. You know what the woman said? She said to her husband, that speaks of Jesus, the head of the church. She said, let us build a room for this. Because I believe that the church is not only called to do something for God, but the church is called to do something with God. Somebody say, with God. Come on, somebody say, with Jesus. Amen. A chair. A chair speaks of this message that the Lord is reminding all of us Christians. I don't know how long you've been saved. But this vintage message that says, all is well. God is teaching us to sit down. Come on. Fendi. Can you come out here a little bit? Show them how to rest. Show them how to chill. Because the Lord is trying to teach us. I know some, things, some crazy things are happening around you. There are some crazy, thing happening, crazy things happening around you, in you, around you, and, and so on. I know there are bills to be paid. I know that there are some situations in church. You know what? I love what Pastor Paul told me and my wife years ago that helped me until now. I said, Pastor Paul, I need to go home tonight. Pastor Paul said, you know, Ram, you need to stay 
you know, maybe a day more here in, in New Life, just to get refreshed. And I said, Pastor Paul, but you know, I have to preach in the church. Pastor Paul said, the church will live. The church was there without you. The church was there before you. Tell somebody it's going to be okay. Come on, tell somebody. I don't know what your situation, but it's going to be okay. Come on, I don't, know, I don't know what you're dealing with right now, but tell somebody, all is well. <laughs> all is well. A chair speaks of a place where we realize Jesus finished it, and He wants us to begin where He finished it. Somebody say amen. And then this part, which everybody loves, lastly, a lamp, a lamp. Thank you, Jesus, for these things that you are showing us. I believe that the lamp speaks of a place to grow in our revelation of three things. Because in the Bible, a lamp, a lamp stand in the book of Revelation, in Exodus, when God had Moses build the tabernacle, you know, there are six furnitures, and in, in the holy place, there was the lamp stand, the menorah. But in the book of Revelation, the, the lamp stand speaks of what? Number one, Jesus, the only light in the holy place, right? Jesus, the light of the world, but it also speaks of the church, right? Because in that menorah, it also speaks of the church, and it speaks also of the Holy Spirit, the illuminator, the revelator. I believe that the church has been designed by God for people to grow in their knowledge of, knowledge of Jesus, who He is in their lives, in their understanding of what the church is all about, with the help of the illuminator, the revelator, the helper, the Holy Spirit. The church is a place where we, get, we become confident in the fact that we will know what to do because the Holy Spirit will lead us. The Holy Spirit will speak to us. As far as your, your purpose is concerned, as far as, your, as far as your destiny is concerned, as far as what to do next is concerned, God is saying to you right now, just relax. If you are a sheep, you will listen. You will hear God's voice and you will be able to understand what God has for you. I believe with all my heart that the lamb stand or a lamb it speaks of the role of Jesus in our lives, the light of the world, the role of the church, the strategic role of the church in the day in which we live. It also speaks of our need of the Holy Spirit, the illuminator, the revelator. Can somebody say amen? Are you thankful? Come on church. Let's just give God praise for this. A lamb also speaks of a place that we grow in our understanding of our purpose. A lamb speaks of a, our understanding of our destiny in God. A lamb is a place where we, a, a lamb speaks of a place where we have that confidence. We regain that confidence because we know we are led by the Spirit. Amen. You don't have to worry because the Holy Spirit will lead you. A bed speaks of restoration, a table speaks of communion, a chair speaks of your position, and God's position in your life, a lamp, speaks of revelation. Stand to your feet, everybody, let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I close this morning, brothers and sisters, there is a verse that when I was finishing the story, the Lord had told me, you need, you need to tell the church about that. In verse 14, I want us to go there. Verse 14 of that same chapter, 2 second, second Kings chapter 4, in verse 13 and 14. Now it speaks of Elijah. Elisha. Elisha was asking Gehazi, his servant, he said, She has done all this trouble for us. What can we do for her? Verse 14, 13 first. He said, What can I do for you? Now this speaks of a person who has been blessed. A person who is a recipient of the church making room for God. God making room through the church. Inviting people in. People coming through that journey. I mean walking in that journey with Jesus. A life changing encounter and journey with Jesus. That eventually they get restored, healed up, discovered their purpose and now they're doing okay. They're, they're, they're blessed. Blessed as can be. And then you have that heart that question in your heart. The church has been a blessing to me. New life has been a blessing to me. I love the house of God. My family would not, would not have been restored. We would still be in chaos if we were not saved, preserved by God 
in this house. I'm thankful for my leaders. I'm thankful for my life group leaders. I thank God for the, for the person who invited me to new life. God is not asking for you to pay him for whatever he has done. But any person who has been touched by the church has this question, what can I do for her? What can I do for the church that God had used to preserve my life? What can I do? And he reiterated in verse 14, he said, something must be done for her. Because we cannot just sit down here and do nothing when we know we, have, we are blessed, we have so much, we have received so much. What can I do for the house of God? What can I do? Maybe that's your question today. I've got very few practical encouragement to you. Number one, embrace the church. Be faithful here. Number two, serve in the house of God. We still have room for servants in the house. I love the fact that there's, that, there's, that there's a growing number of volunteers in the house of God. I love it. It's, it the church gets so exciting, you know, when, when you have all these people wanting to serve the Lord. It's funny, my son, my, our youngest son, when our, on our way here, she woke up at 4 and we were going to the airport and he, and he said, I hate going to, I hate going to school because that's why they're left in, in Tacloban. I hate going to school. I'm supposed to be traveling with you guys because I'm, I'm a pastor's kid. And he's eight years old. And, and, and Ethan said, and I said, what, do you want, do you want to go full time already? He said, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're doing okay. You're doing good. If, 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 if little kids wants to serve in the house of God. Have you been blessed with the church? Have you been encouraged here? There's a place for you to serve. Serve in the house of God. You can pray for new life. I noticed that it's easier to criticize than pray. You can pray for the church. Pray for your leaders. They need it. Give them good, a good encouragement every once in a while. Amen. And stay planted in the church. Stay planted. This is a life-changing journey. We're leading people in a life-changing journey with Jesus. Life-giving church. Leading people in a life-changing journey with Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for what you have imparted to us today. Oh, we love the house of God. Thank you for our leaders. Thank you for our pastors. Thank you for new life, a growing family. Thank you, God, that you brought us into this house that has now become our home. And in this home, we got a room. We got a room. We got a place. We know our place and we know our space. There's a sense of ownership in our hearts. I don't just go to that church. This is my home church. This is my church. I'm going to be planted here. Here, I'm going to sow here. I'm going to give here. I'm going to serve here. I'm going to grow here. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much. Lord, I thank you for the encouragement also to our pastors in this room. I thank you, Father, that you are showing us a different way of doing things. Yes, we want to make room for God. What if the church is God making room for people? And we say amen to that, Lord. We say amen to that. Come on, let's give glory to Jesus, everybody. Come on, let's give Him praise right now. Thank you, Lord. Come on, all over this building. Come on, let's give Jesus praise. Hallelujah! In Jesus' name. Amen.